Hey team, we're going to learn how we can upload images or generally media to Cloudinary using a React or Next.js application. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future updates. Cloudinary is a media platform that gives us a lot of opportunity to do things with images and video, and particularly, we're going to use it to store our images and see how we can also transform those images after they're stored inside of Cloudinary. Now, in order to actually get them up to Cloudinary, we need a way to actually upload them. So we have a variety of options, including the SDK, but we're gonna actually use the REST API. That means we can use any method we want to actually send that request, including fetch directly inside the browser to actually take that image and send it up to Cloudinary. So in order to see how to do that, we're going to use Next.js, which is a React framework that gives you a lot of options for building a website right out of the box. While we're not actually going to be leaning on a ton of Next.js specific features, it gives us a really nice way to very quickly spin up a new application. And particularly, we're going to use Create Next App, which is going to allow us to create a Next.js application from a starter template that I created, where we can immediately jump in and get productive with actually uploading our images. So I created this simple Next.js starter, which is going to give us a basic upload form for where we can add our image, and then we can turn around and take our logic for Cloudinary and send it up to the cloud. If you want to follow along, I have this link to the starter right inside the description that we can easily get started with actually uploading to Cloudinary. But to get started, I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to use yarn, but you can use whatever you want, whether that's yarn or npx. I'm going to paste that into my terminal and we can see that already it's starting to use create next app to clone down that application, where it's also going to start installing the dependencies and everything we need for the project. But it's also going to ask what the project name is. And how about I'm going to go with my image uploader. And once it's done, it's going to go through, make sure that the package is all set up and get us ready to go. But once it's done, we can CD into that new directory, which we see that I did here, and we can run yarn dev or npm run dev, which is going to start our local development server, which we can open up right inside of the browser. And we can see that we have our new basic application, which is really just showing we have our title and we have this file input where we're going to be able to upload an image. We can even test that out by selecting choose file, where I'm gonna select my space jellyfish image. We can see that it's nice and big on here, showing as a preview. And we also get the option to actually upload the files. But if we try to click upload files, it's not going to do anything at this point because that's the point of this tutorial, right? Now, actually looking inside of the code, we're really going to focus on one file here, and that's pages slash index.js, which is our homepage, where if we look inside, we can see that I set up a few things automatically. Now we see some stuff at the top, but we're going to scroll down a little bit further where we can see the main part of this application is going to be our form, where we have our file input, which is how we actually add the image to the browser so that we can then upload it but we can see that once we have that image we're going to show it inside of the actual ui once we have the image and we don't have upload data we're going to allow somebody to actually upload it which will later actually hook up to the form but then once we have our upload data we're going to show that right inside the page so we can see what the details of that request actually are now further, the more important parts of the form are we have these on change and on submit handlers. Now, if we scroll up to look at what's happening here, we can see with the on change, anytime somebody actually changes that input value, it's going to refresh that image that we're showing. So that's really just for the preview that we're currently showing. So that's why I kind of coded that out already, just so that we had something to work with. But what we're going to work inside is this handle on submit function, which is going to be where we take that event we're going to look for the images that somebody's trying to upload, and then we're going to actually do that action of uploading it up to Cloudinary. And finally, as one last thing, we're using React's use state hook, where we can see that we're storing the value of the actual image source along with the upload data, just simply so we can show that inside the application when we're updating the state of the image. So like I mentioned before, when we actually upload an image, we want to be able to take that image and use it to actually send up to Cloudinary. So let's see what happens when we first go to our event handler, where I'm going to console log out this event, and we're going to be able to see that on that event object, we're going to be able to get the current target. Now, if I go ahead and choose my file again, same space jellyfish, and I go ahead and click upload files, we can see that we now have access to the actual form where we're selecting that file. And better yet, what we're going to want to access is the actual file from the input of that form. And we can see how that works by right clicking on the form inside of our console. And I'm going to click store as global variable, where we can see now inside of temp one, I actually have access that I can play around with this form before I actually do the work. 
Now what's going to be interesting to me is from this form, I wanna be able to find this actual file input and grab the files from that input. So just to see what things look like, I'm gonna say constant form equals temp one, just so that we can kind of wrap our head around this a little bit easier. But I wanna grab the form.elements, which this is going to be an HTML collection of the different elements that are actually inside. And we can see as we're going through these, some of them are actually highlighting where we can see that it's the actual inputs inside of here. Now, if we notice, this is a collection and not array, and we want to search through this collection for our actual file input. So the way that we can use methods like find that are available on arrays is we can use the array.from method and pass in that form.elements, where we can see now that instead we have this array of our different elements. Now, if we look here, we wanna grab this input, but we wanna do so in a way that's not by just simply finding that it's an input because we might have multiple inputs, right? But if we look back inside of our code editor and we go down to that input, we can see that it has a name of file. So I'm gonna go back to my browser and again, test test this out. I'm gonna say, I wanna find, and I'm going to pass in a function where inside of this find method, I wanna first destructure the data of that particular element that I'm looping through, and I wanna grab the name. And I want to say that I want the, to find the element where the name is equal to file. And we can see that when I run that, where we're creating that array and we're using the find method to find the item with the name of file, we find that input of file where we can now start to access the files that are uploaded into the browser session. Now, before we go further, I'm going to copy this into the application just so that we have a nice little starting point. So inside of my handle on submit, I'm going to say, I want to create a constant of file input. I'm going to set that equal to exactly what I just used, which is the array.from of the form elements where I find that file input. And remember, we need to create this form. And if we remember, this is going to be the events current target. So I'm going to say constant form is equal to event.current target. And just to make sure this still works, I'm going to go ahead and console log out this file input. Now again, when I go ahead and choose my file and I go ahead and click upload, we can see we now have that file input. And again, we're going to store this as a variable so that we can keep playing around with it inside of the browser. Now, the whole point of this is to grab the files so we can upload that file to Cloudinary. So we wanna be able to grab the files from this input. And the way we can do that is we can write temp1, which is going to be that input, and we can simply access dot files, which we can see that we have this file list where the very first one is going to be that jellyfish that I just uploaded or whatever you're uploading, where we do have this file list that is a length of one, meaning that one item. So really this is exactly all we're going to need in order to send this value up to Cloudinary. Now, in order to actually send this data up to Cloudinary, we're going to use the form data API that's available right inside of the browser, which is going to allow us to create the actual data and body of the request that we're going to then send up to Cloudinary. So inside of my code, I'm going to create a new constant and call it form data, where I'm going to set that equal to a new instance of form data. And notice I'm using a lowercase f and a capital F to distinguish between the two. But now we have our form data so we can actually add our data to that instance, which will then send up to Cloudinary. So to start, I wanna add all of my files to this form. So in this particular case, remember we were using the file input dot files in order to do that. And because there actually might be multiple values, we can actually use a loop to go through and append every single one, where we know in our instance, there's only gonna be one, but just so it kind of future proofs it a little bit. So I'm gonna say for constant file of my file input files, I'm going to create the closure. I'm gonna say that on my form data, I wanna append the value of file with the actual file itself. Now, we'll see in a second that we're actually missing one more thing in order to send our request up to Cloudinary, but let's get started with the actual Cloudinary request so that we can see what's actually happening in practice. So I'm going to now start my request and I'm gonna say constant data is equal to await. I'm gonna use fetch where if we head over to the upload API reference, which I'll also include in the description of this video, we can scroll down and we can find the endpoint that we're going to want to hit, which particularly it's this api.cloudinary.com slash v1 underscore one, and we're going to use our cloud name and then image slash upload. So I'm going to grab that value. 
where I'm going to go ahead and paste that right inside this fetch command, where again, we wanna make sure we update our cloud name of our particular Cloudinary's account. Now we can easily find that cloud name by navigating into our Cloudinary dashboard and right at the top here under account details, we can see cloud name, which we can see mine is Colby Demo. Now again, make sure you're using your own account here because I really don't have a lot of bandwidth, so it's going to end up breaking anyways if everybody's using it. So you can get your own free account over at cloudinary.com. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it with Colby Demo. And now we wanna also pass in some options as a second argument into Fetch. Where first, I wanna define a method of post, but I also wanna send a body, and that body is simply going to be that form data. Now finally, as one last little trick, I like to also add a then at the end of here where I'm gonna say R for response, and I'm going to then turn that response into JSON. So that way, when I have this data constant, it's automatically or already going to be a JSON object for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and then console log out that value so we can see what we get inside of the terminal. So now again, if I choose my file of space jelly and I go ahead and I click upload, we can see that something actually happened this time. We actually get an error. And as I mentioned, we do have one more step, but I wanted to show where we actually, how we got to this point, where we can see that the message of this error is the upload preset must be specified when using unsigned requests. Now, just to show another way that we can find this error is if we head over to the network tab, we can see that at the bottom here, we find this 400 error where we can preview the response and we can see the exact same error that's getting specified from Cloudinary. Now, when uploading assets to Cloudinary, we have two ways of doing that. One is unsigned and one is signed. Where signed is going to be if we actually use an API key and we use valid credentials so that we actually know who's actually sending up that asset to our Cloudinary account. Now, generally speaking, that's a little bit restrictive for our possible use case, where we want really anybody to upload something to this actual application. We just want to be able to make sure that we're able to lock it down to our account. So in order to actually tell Cloudinary that we wanna be able to allow an unsigned request, we have to also use an upload preset. Now to do this, once we're inside of our Cloudinary account, we went ahead over to the settings tab, where once we're on the page, we wanna go over to the upload tab, where if we now scroll down on that page, we're going to be able to see our upload presets and we're going to wanna to click add upload preset. Now here, there's really three things that we wanna be concerned with. The first thing is going to be the preset name, where I'm going to call mine my uploads. Now the second thing is going to be the signing mode. And as we talked about, we wanna set this to unsigned. And then finally, we wanna specify what folder we wanna use. So I'm gonna use the same folder name as my actual name of the preset and just go to use my uploads. And I'm gonna click save. But now we can see once it's actually done that we have our my uploads preset with a few different settings and we're going to be able to now use that. So now back inside of my code, I'm going to add a new form data and append, and I'm going to specify a value of upload underscore preset where for the actual value of that, I'm gonna specify my hyphen uploads, which is the upload preset I just created. But now inside of my application, if I try to click upload files again, it's going to go through and we can see that now this time it was successful and I have all of my information about this image and we can even see I get this secure URL, which I copy that value, remove the quotes and go to it. We have our new image and we can see that it's hosted on cloudinary.com. Now to actually make sure that our application is showing this, we can do one more thing and we can actually set the different state so that it does update inside of the UI. So we wanna do two things where we're going to set the image source and we're going to set the upload data. So first let's set the image source and I'm gonna set that equal to data.secure underscore URL, but then I'm going to set the upload data. And I'm gonna simply set that to that data object. But now if I click the upload files button again, we can see that it was replaced and we now have all this data right inside of the page of that new upload that was successfully created. We can even see that if we head over to our dashboard and go to our media library, we can now find that new folder where if I click through, we can now see those images that I uploaded. Now this is great and these files aren't too big, but what if I was uploading a big image? I found this cool image of a large spiral galaxy over at nasa.gov. But if I click through it, first of all, we can see that this image is size 3600 by 3600. Now, if I actually download that image and I try to upload it into Cloudinary, just like I did with my Space Jelly file, 
we can see that it's a pretty big file. It's 1.33 megabytes large. And while that doesn't seem that big for one, maybe two assets at that size, if we start to add that up with a broad amount of people trying to upload similar or if not larger images, that's going to take up a lot of my storage. So what we can do instead is before this image ever actually hits my Cloudinary Cloud, we can provide a transformation. Particularly, we're going to resize the image to a little bit smaller of a size. We can try 2000 by 2000. And we can also make sure that we're going to optimize this image with something that's going to be a great compression algorithm that's still going to maintain a great level of quality. That way we're not really adding a ton to our actual storage. Now to do that, we're going to use incoming transformations, which you can also set up inside of your SDK request if you're using signed requests, but we're using unsigned requests. So we're going to do so using our upload preset. So back over on my upload settings page, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to again find the My Uploads preset that I earlier created. And on the left-hand side here, I'm going to select Upload Manipulations, where we can then see the incoming transformation. For here, I'm gonna click Edit, and we can see we get this UI where we can really do a lot of different things with it. And we can really apply a lot of different options if we wanted to transform it. But because this is still going to be the core image that we're storing in our cloud, we probably don't wanna do a whole lot of transformations. We don't really wanna ruin this image so that we can provide the transformations later on the fly when we're actually trying to serve the image. So to start, I'm going to add a width of two, thousand that way it's going to size it down to a maximum value for that width of 2000 but then under format and shape under quality i'm going to select this drop down and instead of manual i'm going to set this to automatic and particularly best quality that way it's going to do it for me and i can be sure that it's going to be the best quality that it can be without really ruining the image itself and then i'm going to click ok and then finally save now the cool thing is we don't have to do anything else with our code. We can see that under our actual upload preset, we now have our incoming transformation with the actual transformations that are being applied. But if we head over to our image uploader, refresh the page, I'm going to upload that very same image again up into the Cloudinary Cloud. We can see that we again get this secure URL, which I'm going to open up inside of my browser. And we can see that the image is actually sized 2000 by 2000 pixels. But if we head over to our actual media library, we go back to our My Uploads folder, we can see that new upload where we see 2000 by 2000, but we also see basically more than half of the size of, or less than half of the size of what that original asset was. So we're saving a ton of space and we're not impacting the actual visual integrity of that image. Now really this is just scratching the surface of what we can do with Cloudinary, but this is how we can actually upload images and even video into our cloud so that we can then take advantage of all the rest of the cool features of Cloudinary. What's your favorite tips and tricks for actually storing media inside of Cloudinary? Do you like to perform your transformations before or after they actually get stored? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna learn how to take the next steps and actually provide transformations on the fly, such as face detection when you're trying to show a gallery of images, check out my video for generating thumbnail images using face detection in Cloudinary. Or if you wanna get more into Next.js features and learn how to use Cloudinary with the Next.js image component, including creating a blurred placeholder image, check out my video Next.js image with Cloudinary using the link above. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.